ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೌ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತೌ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನಿ ಭೂಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತುಮಾಶಾಭೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಧಾತು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ಸಂಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಜೀವಾಖ್ಯಾತಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಕೃಷಿ ಧಾತು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರೋ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ದಂಡಮ್ಯಕ್ತ ಸಂಭೂ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಮನೋಬುಧಿರಸ್ಯಧಿಷ್ಠಾನುಚ್ಯತೆ ಏತೇರ್ ವಿಮೋಹತ್ಯೇಷ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಾವೃತ್ಯ ದೇಹ್ನ ಅಸ್ಯ ಕಾಮಸ್ಯಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಕಿಮ್ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಕಾಮ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಅಬೋಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಮ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಮನ ಮನ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಅಂತಃಕರಣ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಮನ ಅಂಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಅಸ್ಯ ಅಧಿಷ್ ಅಸ್ಯ ಕಾಮಸ್ಯ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಏತೈ ಥ್ರೂ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಮನ ಅಂಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಏಷ ವಿಮೋಹಯತಿ through using these indriyas mana and buddhi as tools kama deludes a person who dehinam the one who has deha person in the sense the jiva who has become individualized jiva is brahma but jiva has become individualized as though although there is no real segmentation he has become individualized having been associated with an individual body when the same brahma associates with the vyashti he becomes jiva and when associates with the samashti the same brahma becomes ishvara so jnanam avrutya that jnanam viveka is diluted and having covered one's own viveka the person uh, the atma becomes a person becomes a person means he associates with the koshas and becomes delimited as though so dehinam dehinam jnanam dehinam avrut uh, dehinam vimohayati jnanam avrutya vivekam avrutya dehinam vimohayati atmanam vimohayati basically atma which has become segmented now as that kind of a segmented atma it deludes although atma is jnana sarupa it cannot be deluded but still the under the influence of maya which makes a person associate with a limited body mind sense complex indriyas mana and buddhi are the tools of these uh, or the, these are the manifestations of guna of maya and through these tools vimohayati so avarna is there and then vikshepa is there here jnana mavrutte viveka is covered up atma anatma viveka right and wrong all these are uh, are gone for a toss a person gets deluded and keeps on going through samsara what happens is uh, next he is saying yatah evam since this is so yatah yasmat karanat evam what is what is yatah here this is yatah the uh, indriyas bring in the vishayas which make basically circumstantially based on a person's prarabdha based on person's karma initial karma which is accumulated and is ready for fructification based on that the circumstances are created around the person ishwara creates the circumstances so that the prarabdha can manifest and fructify karma phala to the person whether it is for good or bad the person has to undergo upabhoga of the karma that he has done so for based on this karma phala which is ready for fructification which is called as prarabdha that prarabdha uh, to be met 
for that prarabdha to be met, circumstances are created and these circumstances are in the form of the vishaya, the objects which are surrounding you. These objects need not be sentient, insentient alone, they can be sentient also. Thereby indriyas bring in these vishayas. Indriyas bring in the vishayas and then a person is connected to these vishayas. So subject-object division uh, helps a person to objectify something else and do upabhoga and thereby experience the karma phala. Now this, whether it is raga or dvesha, here in the sense of raga is easier to understand. So due to raga, a person keeps on indulging again and again. So that is the role of manaha. Indriyas bring the vishyas, then manaha makes a person indulge again and again, which is called an abhyasa, repetition. There is a repetition, repetitive indulgence, whether the vishaya is there or not. Once the vishaya upabhoga has happened, then the impressions which are left behind on the mind, a person keeps on indulging, bringing back the, this vishaya to mind again and again, even in the absence of the vishaya. First in the presence of the vishaya, then manaha brings back in the form of memory, antakkarana, brings in chitta, the smriti of that vishaya again and again, and the indulgence is in the mind. Buddhi does what is called a shovana adhyasa. Shovana adhyasa means seeing value where it does not belong. In this particular vishaya, there is no ananda. But that vishaya sukha anubhava is there. And that is there in the presence of vishaya. So person does anvaya vetireka wrongly. As long as the vishaya is there, I had sukha. When the vishaya, I obtained it that time there is sukha. Vishaya, when it was not there, I didn't have sukha. But a person fails to do the anvaya vetireka properly as to even when the vishaya is there, there is no sukha. Otherwise, that vishaya continuously being there, I should have continuous sukha, but there is no continuous sukha. It is momentary. And if a person had done anvaya vetireka right, this jnana had not been avrutya, there had there not been avarna on this viveka, a person would really think well. A person needs training in this thinking. Thereby, logically also one can land on it that the vishaya does not have sukha. But buddhi does what is called a shobanadhyasa, seeing value of sukha or whatever it is that one feels erroneously that one superimposes on the object that is called a shobhana adhyasa. Adhyasa is superimposition and shobhana is adding that value. Shobha where it is not there. Shobha is, shobhana is mute. It, it is the, uh, it is a bhavi vikpati. So seeing value, valuation is added where it does not belong and thereby buddhi justifies the kama, abhyasa of kama in the manaha and thereby this continues further, indulgence continues into uh, samsara, further through indriyas and indriya, manaha, buddhi, these become the tools for the kama to tie up the person in samsara and that, all that is yatahe eva. Since this is so, therefore what the next shloka, 41st shloka, tasmatvam indriya nyadau niyamya bharatarshabha papmanam prajahi jenam Jnana Vijnana Nashanam Tasmat Yata Evam Tasmat Yasmat Evam Tasmat Since this is so, since this is the uh, clarity that you have now that Kama uses Indriyas, Mana and Buddhi to bind you. It takes away your Viveka and further binds you. Therefore, Tam Adav Indriyani Niyamya Since Indriyas bring in Vishayas and as far as we can understand, we cannot understand unless taught that uh, there is some vasana due to which these indriyas have come in association with me or I have come in association with the uh, vishayas, not indriyas, vishayas. But the first viveka if you do without knowing shastras, you know that I, I came in contact with a vishaya through these indriyas and then I started liking it. So that being the case, Indriyani Adav Niyamya. Therefore, you start by Dhamma and then Shama. So Indriyani 
आदौ नियम्य नियम्य मीन्स हैविंग कंट्रोल ये बनता यम धातु नी पूर्वक यम धातु तस्मात देर फोर तस्मात त्वम यू त्वम इंद्रिया नियम्य सो नियम्य आदौ आदौ इज इन दी बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ बट नियम्य त्वम इज द कर्ता इंद्रिया इंद्रिया त्वम के नॉट बी इन सामन अधिकरण्यम नियम्य वी टेक कर्मा इन सेकेंड केस सो इंद्रिया इन सेकेंड केस आदौ तस्मात आदौ त्वम त्वम इंद्रिया नियम्य हैविंग कंट्रोल दम इन दी बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ बिगिनिंग ऑफ दी साधना इंद्रिया नियम्य हे भरतर्षभ भरतर्षभ ही संबोधना तो भरत वंश हिंदी भरत वंश हु एवर अमोंग ऑल दी भरत यू आर अ ऋषभ सो भरत ऋषभ इज लाइक सो ऋषभ इज लाइक सी इट्स अ कंपेरिजन ऑफ बुल लाइक अ बुल विच शोज द स्ट्रेंथ एंड शोज यू नो प्रोमिनेंस सो लाइक यू आर अ प्रोमिनेंट अमोंग दी भरत दिस इज द आइडिया देर भरत हे भरत ऋषभ हे भरतर शभ सुषभ एंड अकारा हियर रु एंड अकार अकारा संधि देर यण संधि देर वाय भरत रु हैज बिकम अर देर भरतर भरतर शभ तस्माद आदौ तम इंद्रिया नियम्य तस्माद कैन गो इन दी बिगिनिंग एज वेल तस्माद हे भरतर शभ आदौ तुम इंद्रिया नियम्य वॉट शुड यू डू पापमानम प्रजही प्रकर्षेण जयी सो दैट इट डजन कम बैक अगेन प्रजयी प्रजयी इज लोटलकार मध्यम पुरुष एक वचन पापमानम इज कर्मा टू दैट प्रजयी सो प्रजयी इज यू ओहा क्या गे सो जयी Sometimes it can be said as destroy or give up, to give up papa. So papa nam, enam papa nam. This is this indulgence itself is a papa. Even if it is not papa karma, even if it is not papa karma, what happens is that it will uh, keep the person in samsara. Thereby it is uh, papa. But really, what happens is that uh, karma overshadows. it covers up atma in fact even liquor liquor is said to be uh, one of the pancha mahapapas why because it takes away your viveka viveka buddhi role of buddhi which is viveka although buddhi can justify by shobhana adhyasa given enough time when the kama goes away antakarana stops behaving like manaha and influences buddhi when it stops doing that then Uh, many people who do wrong they know they are doing wrong that's why there is an after thought post mortem analysis they wherein you know that i shouldn't have done this so that conscience is there which which comes into play after the desire goes away after the desire is met and the person comes back to one senses then one knows that this indulgence is not good for me it has taken away time time and energy it has taken away but buddhi does work and whatever shadows the buddhi whatever does not let the buddhi function fully which is going to be karana for jnana vidyana that kind of buddhi being covered by liquor influence of liquor liquor is said to be the worst uh, it is said to be mahapataka so one of the uh, five great sins so enam papmanam prajehi therefore this this also what what kama is doing it is it is not letting your buddhi come into play fully thereby it is not allowing viveka to take place and thereby stopping your pursuit of what you are born for thereby prajehi uh, means to have tyage do tyaga tyaga of this papa of this kama rupa 
Papmanam. Papmanam is Papa. Enam Papmanam Rajayi, which is what? Jnana, Vijnana, Nashanam Papmanam. Papmanam. Enam Jnana Vijnana. So Jnana and Vijnana, when they are together, Jnana has to be taken as uh, just a second, Nashanam. So this is qualifying the Papa. What kind of Papa, Papa? That Papa which is destroyer of Jnana and Vijnana. So when you see Jnana and Vijnana together, then Jnana can be taken as Paroksha Jnana and Vijnana as Aparoksha Jnana. Meaning, what is called Aparoksha Jnana is also called as Anubhava. So Jnana is Paroksha, uh, Shastra Jnana, which uh, is Shravana, but Shravana up to the extent of what does the Shastra say? That Manana Siddha, it has not become Manana and Nididhyasana Siddha would be Vijnana. So, Vijnana is Vishesha, that Vishesha is Aparokshatvam. It is direct, it is, it is immediate, it is not mediate, it is not, not through a sense organ. Once the sense organ has uh, come into play, and not sense organ, any organ, this inner instrument, what we call as Antakkarana, that antakkarana, when that also resolves into uh, oneself, that is anubhava, where there is no additional uh, additional uh, confirmation needed from anything else, whether it is a karana or antakkarana. No karana comes into play once the vritti also is dissolved. So jnana would be that vritti which tells you that what is the shastra artha. And Vijnana is confirmed Anubhava Siddha, meaning that there is no doubt left. It is doubtless knowledge and it is immediate. Nobody needs to tell you that you are conscious. That kind of confirmation is there once the, uh, the Shastrartha is Nididhyasana Siddha. So Jnana Vijnana Nashanam Papmanam Prajahi Prakarshena Jahihi. This is in Samadhani Karanam, so it is. Further, Indriyanam, uh, in, sorry, Indriyani, uh, there is some typo here. Let me just check what, what is it. Copy paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a Makara, some, something, okay. It is Indriyani Adho. Okay. There is no Makara. Right. Indriyani Adho Niyamya Kamam Shatrum Jahihi Ityuktam. So, what I said, Papmanam Jahi, Kamam Jahihi. Prajahi or Jahihi, Kamam. And what is that Kama? It is Shatru. Why Shatru? Because it is, uh, it is said earlier, as Ragadvesha are like highway robbers. Kama is a Shatru. So, this Indriyani Adho Niyamya, what should you do? Kamam. Shatrum jahi ityuktam, it has been said, tatra kimashraya kamam jaihyat ityuchyate. So, uh, jahi hi is lotlakara madhya purushe ekvachana. And in the same meaning, vidhilin, kamam kimashraya san kamam jaihyat. When you give up something, tyaga, so jaihyat is how taking basis of what should one give up kama. So what is the process? How do you give up karma? You have to take uh, ashraya of something. You cannot just give up everything. They say that you give up. How do you give up? You have to, you, even Buddhists say that there is shunya. Shunya is with support of your own self. You are, you are the one who says that everything else, nothing else is there. Everything is shunya means nothing else is there. Nothing else is there. Not that nothing is there. Nothing else means you are there. One who is rejecting everything, one who is rejecting the reality of everything else, that it becomes else and there is nothing else because you alone are there. That is a miss. Here it is Kimashra means even in the process of giving up something, one has to take some reality and then give up what is, what is not real or what has to be given up has to be given up by taking support of something. So therefore, Kimashraya Kamun Jaiyat. So yeah, 
in short the process is being explained as to how do you go inward by giving up karma where what is your next step where do you go further what is the process of giving up karma so that is shown here in the 42nd shloka indriyani paranyahu indriyebhya paramanaha manasastu para buddhe yo buddhe paratastu sah so indriyani parani ahuhu ahu is uh, pratham purusha bahu vachana dese dese means those who know shastras dese that indriyani are indriyani parani indriyas are parani so it, this is karma to ahu indriyas are superior superior to what indriyas are superior to vishayas but here indriyas are superior in a uh, uh, upanishad mantra another way also it is taken that vishayas are superior to indriyas why because they draw the indriyas or they are the ones who from which the indriyas are created the sukshma mahabhutas have created vishayas and they have created indriyas also from sukshma mahabhutas uh, the indriyas are born and since they are karanas the sukshma mahabhutas themse- themselves become gross and once they becomes gross after panchikarana they become the objects for their karyas therefore uh, karana is superior to karya so one upanishad mantra talks about the, uh, that kind of a process here what is said indriyani parani indriyas are superior so indriyas are sukshma so they are sukshma and sukshma is always superior to stula therefore here you have to say that they are superior to stula compared to the stula stula vastu or stula sharira indriyas are superior are said to be superior and these people who say they those who ahu who those who say they are ones who have knowledge of shastras indriyebhya param manaha manaha mind is said to be superior here we can say ahu indriyebhya param manaha ahu then this will be second case param indriyebhya compared to indriyas also manaha is superior why because mind can withdraw the sense organs therefore mind is superior and this is explaining the process kimashtaya here you take the support of indriyas and understand that indriyas can have a say i can close my eyes i have control over my eyes i can close the eyes and vishayas cannot drag them although we think that vishayas are you know the it's so beautiful the world is so beautiful it drags me it does it cannot drag you you have a say over your indriyas thereby indriyas are superior and indriya ashraya kim ashraya kamam jaya first indriya ashraya and thereby taking support of indriyas meaning controlling these indriyas you withdraw yourself from the external world then indriya vya param manah then you take support of mana ashraya mana ashraya san kim ashraya means kim ashraya yasya kim ashrayam yasya yasya sah so it is pulling up. so being what kind of a person you be a person who has control over indriyas so indriya ashraya then mana ashraya manah ashraya yasya so for whom ma- mind is the ashraya you take the control of the mind and then thereby controlling the mind you withdraw the indriyas and from indriyas also you withdraw the mind away you take the backing of the mind then manasastu para buddhi buddhi is trilinga therefore para See, here you can say you take the first case also this can be first case also param mana it is neuter if you take ahu hu then you have to say uh, indriyebhya manah param ahu hu or you say manah param iti ahu or uh, bhavati bhavati is also fine here manasastu para buddhi buddhi is what para compared to mana also because when the mind itself is lost in thoughts that time you have to withdraw it from the uh, using the buddhi buddhi viveka through jnana 
you control the mind also take so buddhya ashraya buddhya ashraya san uh, kamam jayyat kama which is which is rooted deep rooted in the mind we can say that the kama is rooted in indriyas how do you take away the kama how do you give up kama which are in the indriyas by taking support of mana what what about the uh, kama which is deep rooted inside the mind that you give up by taking support of buddhi what about buddhi itself buddhi also is having shobhana adhyasa it is justifying so there also you have to withdraw from the buddhi buddhi is also uh, buddhi has to be worked upon you are a witness of the buddhi that buddhi which is trying to justify you are not the buddhi then that kamaha which is being justified by buddhi also how do you give up there is no sukha shobhana adhyasa is wrong shobhana adhyasa is just an adhyasa it is superimposition there is no shobhana there is no value in the vishaya itself in kama it is not bringing any pleasure it is dukha roopa how do you know when because through shastra study when you understand and when you do shravana manana nididhyasana you know that the sukha is manifest from the atma thereby saha atma buddhehe parataha saha atma tu buddhehe parataha it is the most superior even compared to buddhi it is superior yah yah buddhehe parataha tu saha atma saha atma bhavati that is atma and thereby atma ashraya san taking refuge in oneself one's own innermost self which is brahmatma there is the limit sakashta sa paragati in uh, uh, katopanishad it is said to be sakashta sa paragati hi that is the limit you cannot go further inside that is atma so both ways if you say atma is superior there are people who, who question what about beyond atma how do you know there is nothing how about beyond ishvara what is beyond ishvara so instead of that the answer given by shastra is yah buddhe paratah tu sah atma that if you think that there is somebody superior to that also that is not atma the definition of atma is the most superior so if you think who is superior to that there cannot be that question is invalid why is it invalid who is superior to ishvara you cannot ask such a question because our definition of ishvara or atma is one who is the most superior you ask uh, taking whose support should i go within after buddhi atma what about after atma who support should i take you cannot take any support because we are defining atma as the innermost that is atma there cannot be innermost to innermost if there is then you have not landed on the innermost thereby buddhe paratastu parata who is the buddhe parato sah atma that is atma this is simple so all panchamis and uh, prathamas here just uh, te ahu you can just say te ahu vivekinah let's see what bhashyakara says here te ahu vivekinah panditah so panditah ahu so mana hai sankalpa vikala vikalpatmakam whereas buddhi is what nischayatmika buddhi thereby she is superior to mana tata kim so there after what happens tata kim so let's say you landed sa atma that atma is superior so the last shloka of the third chapter says evam buddhe param buddhva samstabhyatman matmana jahi shatru mahabahu kamarupan durasaram durasatam sorry so evam in this manner evam buddhehe param buddhva buddhehe param buddhva one who is superior even to buddhi so you can say buddhehe param buddhva so panchami this can be shashti also one is uh, superior compared to buddhi or superior to buddhi but since there is a comparative we can use panchami here param buddhva having known that that atma sah atmanam buddhva saustabhya atmanam then saustabhya is what saustabhya is means being steady becoming steady in that like a stambha like a stambha becomes steady therefore saustabhya lebanta again this is twanta 
This is also twa and ta, but twa is replaced by yap when there is a sam upasarva. So atmanam, how atmana, atmana sam, atmana samstabhya. Through, through here atma is uh, this this atma is Brahma atma. This atma atmana tritya. This atmana is antakarani. Antakarana buddhyava. So, samsabhya, using the tools which you have, the same buddhi will, the same antakarana works as a manaha, it works as buddhi also, and all jnana which leads to moksha will also take place in the mind, in the buddhi itself, antakarana. That buddhi, vrityatmika itself, the jnana is vrityatmakam. Through that vritti, the all misunderstandings are taken away. The jnanotpati is through that uh, vritti. All neti neti prakriya is through that vritti. Finally, the vritti which takes away ajnana, that vritti will also dissolve because the vritti cannot last forever. So, it will also go away and it will go away taking away triputi and one will remain as oneself shuddha atma. So, Atmana Atmanam Samstabhya Buddhehe Param Buddhva Atmana Atmanam Samstabhya Becoming steady in that Atma. This is the result, not a direct translation because there is no Saptami. Atmana Atmanam Samstabhya means making one steady, oneself steady. This Atmana can, can be reflexive here rather. Jahi Shatru Mahabhav. This Shatru is what? Kama Rupam Shatru Shatrum Jahi. He Mahabaho, this Shatrum is what? Kama Rupam Shatrum uh, Jahi. And another adjective to this is Durasadam. Durasadam is uh, Du and Asadam. Do you see Dur? Dur Purvaka Asada. Asada means uh, uh, Dukhena Asadaha Yasya. So Dukhena Asadaha is what? Duk, that which is Asada is Prapti. Dukhena Prapti Yasya Ityartha. The meaning is that that which is difficult, very difficult to attain, that kind of a uh, difficult to uh, gain over. So, that kind of a meaning is there. Let us look at what the Bhashya says with the last sloka of the third chapter. Bhashya says, Yeah, Dukhena asadaha asadam prapti yasya tam durasadam durvigneya aneka vishesham iti. So, that which is very difficult to understand this uh, this Kama Rupa Shatru is difficult. So it is difficult to win over that kind of a Shatru because it is what Guru Vidya Aneka Vishesha. Aneka Vishesha, it, 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 so many, it is in so many forms. It manifests itself in so many forms. That kind of Durasada Shatru Kama Rupa, you have to give up to move forward thereby. Shatrum Jahi, Jahi is again, it's a, it's a lot lakara, but it is a uh, arsha, arsha form, it is Jahi is Jahi hi, lot lakara, Madhya Purusha equation, Shatrum, Shatrum, Jahi hi, which is Kama Rupa, Kama ha Rupa yasya Shatru ho, Sa Shatru ho, Kama Rupa ha, and Tam Shatru, Kama Rupam Shatru, Jahi, he Mahabaho. Evam Buddhehe Param Buddhva, which is also Atma, Atmanam. You can, be, you can repeat this and say Buddhe Param Atmanam Buddhva. Atmanam Buddhva. Then Atmana. Atmanam Saustabhya. So this is showing all, all the forms. Shravana Manan, Nididhyasana, all are included here. Saustabhya, Shatrum, Kama Rupam, Durasadam, Durasadam, Shatrum, Jahi. All this is He Mahabaho. 
so this is the third chapter this third chapter is uh, called as uh, karma yoga everything else is same the colophon that we saw last time let's move on to the fourth chapter so bhagwan bhashyakara said that the first chapter was a nimitta for arjuna for krishna to teach arjuna was a nimitta and his shoka moha was nimitta which is true for everyone in samsara and thereby taking him as nimitta bhagwan krishna is teaching gita then in the second chapter we saw first he tried to insult arjuna and try to bring him out out of the shoka moha but that shock didn't work he was in immense uh, sorrow and he was not able to come out even with that shock thereby he submitted as you tell me what to do and in the second chapter and third chapter uh, bhagwan krishna talked about the division of how to attain this parama purushartha moksha whereby all sorrow will go even arjuna's sorrow which he uh, thought that will not go he was not able to see how swarga or in swarga as in after uh, in paraloka eh loka and paraloka eh in this loka winning the war or in paraloka uh, by attainment of swarga whether it is losing the war or having won the war and later so you can take two options he wins the war here he enjoys sukha here if he loses the war but since it is a kshatriya dharma he will get swarga thereby paraloka uh, sukha he said that i do not know what kind of uh, prapti will take away this dukha here or hereafter thereby bhagwan krishna told him that through karma yoga one path and through jnana yoga other path but both lead to the same goal although adhikaris are different and one has to follow based on one's adhikaritvam still both will lead to the same sukha because through karma yoga one will get chitta shuddhi and through jnana one will get moksha thereby in the second chapter jnana yoga was dealt with in the uh, third chapter that is jnana yoga is samkhya samkhya is jnana yoga and in third chapter karma yoga was dealt with therefore bhagwan bhashyakara says in this fourth chapter yoyam yogaha yaha ayam yogaha adhyaya dvayena uktaha ज्ञाननिष्ठा लक्षण सन्यास कर्मयोगोपाय यस्ेदारिसवृत्तिलक्षण निवृत्तिलक्षण गीतासु चर्वासु अयम एव योग विवक्षिता भगवता विच वॉज सेड अर्लियर एज वेल योग अयमेव योग दिस इज दैट योग विच इज इंटेडेड टू बी रिवील्ड बाय भगवान भगवता विवक्षिता it is intended to be revealed by bhagwan where gita su in all gita shlokas or sar- sarvasu gita su in the entire gita although it is in plural you can take in entire gita or in the sum total of all shloka shloka this is the idea which is being revealed here which is which is what this yoga is pravrutti lakshana nivrutti lakshana like dharma which which was started with dharma is pravrutti lakshana nivrutti lakshana similarly this another word for this is yoga because yoga is finally merging of the atma with par- parmatma figuratively there is no merging merging is dropping of every erroneous association is the merger there is no real merger because if the merger is real then it will not be nitya your nature has to be parmatma swarupa otherwise that swarupa which comes and goes is not swarupa at all which can, which, ha, which has real attainment will go away in time so yah ayam yoga this yoga which has been mentioned as what adhyay dvayena ukta the last two chapters second and third chapter through the second and third chapter this yoga was talked about whether it is pravrutti lakshana or nivrutti lakshana both have been talked about mixed up and separately as well adhyay dvayena ज्ञान निष्ठा लक्षण विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय निष्ठा इन ज्ञान फाइनली द कल्मिनेशन ऑफ कर्म योग इज ऑल्सो ज्ञान निष्ठा ओनली इट कैनॉट बी एनीथिंग एल्स 
one remains a karma yogi without understanding Ishwara, that karma yoga is not going to be fruitful. Karma yoga, it is not karma yoga at all because karma yoga is understanding dharma as revealed by the Shastra which reveals Ishwara along with it. Why should you follow something which is prescribed by Vedas? Because Vedas are the uh, words of Ishwara. They are the words of Ishwara and karma yoga is also with the understanding of Ishwara with uh, Ishwara arpana buddhi and prasada buddhi. Thereby jnana niksha lakshana that whether jnana itself is culminating in moksha but still Vaya Chitta Shuddhi, Karma Yoga is also leading there. So, Jnana Nishta Lakshana and Sasanyasa Karma Yoga Upaya. Karma Yoga which is an Upaya to Jnana Nishta. Vaya Sasanyasa. So, Sasanyasa, Sanyasa in a Sahavartate is Sasanyasa. Sahabhavi. So, Sasanyasa Karma Yoga Upaya has been explained. And Jnana Nishta Lakshana, this is Pravrti Lakshana and Nivrti Lakshana. Karma Yoga Upaya. Karma Yoga Upaya Yasya. That Jnana Nishtha Lakshana which is preceded by Karma Yoga and thereby Karma Yoga is an Upaya means to that Jnana Nishtha Lakshana and Sasanyasa which is so Jnana Nishtha Lakshanam Yasya that Yoga is Moksha finally. This Yoga Moksha Vivakshita. What is that Yoga or Moksha? This Yoga is not Chitta Vritti Nirodha Yoga. This yoga is moksha which is jnana nishtha lakshana. Uh, jnane nishtha lakshana yasya. Yasya yogasya, yogasya va moksha sya va. Saha moksha or yoga is what? Jnana nishtha lakshana. Which is sasanyasa. Which cannot be along with samsara. You cannot say that I will indulge in everything and still have moksha. It's impossible. One has to remain free from indulgence and thereby sasanyasa, giving up everything else for the pursuit of moksha, that is, this moksha is sasanyasa. And karma yoga is its upaya, therefore karma yoga upaya. Yasmin vedartha parisamaptaha, this entire vedanam arthaha, arthaha is vedanam arthaha antahava, vedanta or vedartha, here same meaning, parisamaptaha. Parisamapta here, what is the, in Vedanta, what is the anta? Parisamapta. Parisamapta means very well concluded. It is a well thought conclusion. So, Vedanam arthaha or Vedanam antaha is what? Nishchaya. It is Nishchaya. It is Parisamapti. Where is the entire Veda leading to? Including Karma Kanda. It is leading to the Tatparya which is Mahavakya. So, Yasmin Vedartha Parisamaptaha, that Moksha, that Paramapurushartha is Pravritti Lakshana, Nivritti Lakshana, Cha Yoga, that is Gita Sucha Sarvasu, Ayam Eva Yoga, uh, Vivakshita Bhagavata. By Bhagavan, this is that Yoga which is intended. Now, he has already explained this. What remains? Nothing remains to be taught. Why 18 chapters? Then he has finished everything in the first three chapters wherein the teaching was in the second and third chapter. What remains? He says now only praise of this remains. How it has come about to be? What is the Rishi Parampara of this? All, everything else he has already covered. So, Ataha Parisamaptam Vedartham Manvanaha Manvanaha Bhagavan. Bhagavan Manvanaha Krishna, one who is considering Sanachanta. Kartari Shanachir, Manmana, one who is considering. What is he considering? Vedartham Parisamaptam. He is considering that entire Veda's teaching he has given, summarized. Parisamaptam in the second and third chapters. Therefore, some Vamsakhatenena Stauti. He praises this knowledge which he has disclosed as Pravritti Lakshana and Nivritti Lakshana, Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga, which he has talked about, Sankhya Yoga, Ityadi. That he praises. How does he praise? Through the Vamsha Katana. How has this uh, knowledge been retained in the Sampradaya? How it was there in the... So, Vamsha Rishis or Vamsha Katana. The, the disclosure of how it was taught and retained. He, he Bhagavan praises Stauti, Shri Bhagavan. Stauti, Shri Bhagavan, Stauti. 
How? How does he praise? Tam vamsha katene na stauti. He praises that Vedhartham. The entire Vedartha he praises. Thereby the fourth chapter begins as a praise. He starts with the praise of the uh, knowledge which was, the yoga which was talked about as Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga or Sankhya Yoga through the glorification, uh, disclosure of the Sampradaya. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Imam Vivasvate Yogam Pruktavanaham Avyayam Vivasvan Manave Praha Marurikshvakave Praveet It's a simple shloka. Imam Vivasvate Yogam Pruktavan Aham Aham Pruktavan I had taught Pruktavan Tavatu Aham Aham Pruktavan I had said Prakarshena Uktavan But Prakarshena Uktavan means I have very well taught this To whom and what so, Dvikarmaka, what was taught and to whom? Dvikarmaka, it can take second case or it can take fourth case also. What was taught? Sampradha, Sampradhane Chaturthi. So, there were Vivasvate, Vivasvate, to, vivas, to Vivasvata I had taught. Who is this? This is Surya, Aditya. So, Imam, Aham, Imam, Aham, Imam Yogam, this very yoga I had taught to yogam to whom? Vivasvate. Vivasvate Toktavan. I had taught it to Vivasvan. To Aditya, to Surya. And then what is this again? Avyayam. This, this yoga is Imam Avyayam Yogam. Avyayam Yogam because this knowledge itself cannot go. This knowledge has is from Vedas and this knowledge will always be there. So Vivasvate Proktavan and Vivaswan. Finally, what happened? Uh, not finally, later. Vivaswan, Vivaswan Manave Praha to Manu. He taught it to Manu. Prakarshenaha. So he taught to Manu and then Manuhu. What about Manu? Manuhu Ikshvakavi. Ikshvaka was, uh, Ikshvaku was uh, son of Manu or in the lineage. So Ikshvaku, Ikshvakavi Abravit. So Vamsha Katana. Uh, I taught it to Surya, Surya taught it to Manu, Manu taught it to Ikshvaku. This is what Bhagavan said. This is the Vamsha Kathana. Now, why did he teach? Why did he teach to Arjuna now? Which is Parampara Praptam. He is just hinting to the Parampara. Meaning with Surya, when Surya was born, that time I taught him to, uh, taught this knowledge to Surya. Surya taught it to Manu, Manu taught it to Ikshvaku Ityadi. So there is a parampara which is uh, the Vamsha Kathana now. Evam parampara praptam yam rajarsha yoviduhu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa. So evam parampara praptam imam, imam yogam rajarsha ha viduhu. Viduhu, uh, Viduhu is an optional form of Vidhat. Actually, uh, the first five Pratyas, uh, Thing Pratyas, they are replaced with, la, uh, with link Lit Pratyas. So, Lit replaced, so Nal Atus Us, Thal Atus. So, these are the first five Lit Pratyas which replace the Thing Pratyas. In Latlakara, so in Latlakara form will also be Viduhu. So, Rajarsha Viduhu. It can be Latlakara, but it can be Litlakara as well. Both are possible. Here you can take it as Litlakara. Rajarshi is, Rajarshi is new. Raj, who are Rajas as well as Rishis. This is the Vamsha Kathana. So it continued in the Kshatriya Vamsha. Krishna had taught it to Surya and then further it continued in the uh, who are Rajas as well as Rishis. You can take as 
क्षत्रिय क्षत्रिय इट कंटिन्यूड इन और यू कैन ऑल्सो टेक राजाज एंड ऋषिज सो क्षत्रियाज एंड ब्राह्मण बोथ हैड दिस नॉलेज विच कंटिन्यूड फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एवं परंपरा प्राप्त दिस योगा वॉज परंपरा प्राप्त एवं इन दिस मैनर परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजर्षय सॉरी राजर्षय प्लूरल विदु सह सहयोग हव एवर वॉट हेपन सहयोग इह महता कालेन महता कालेन ड्यू टू अ लॉन्ग टाइम वॉट हेपन्स इन इफ यू टेक अ लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन द नॉलेज कैन इनक्रीज बट देर आर पार्ट्स विच आर लॉस्ट एंड वॉट हेपन्स देर आर सम commitments which keep on changing and over a period of time knowledge is lost in so you say it is lost over over time over time it was lost so kalena eh mahata kalena yogah nashtah he he parantap parantapayati ti parantap he parantap this knowledge was lost in time nashtah mahata kalena by long time eras eras have passed by and there evam parampara praptam what yoga imam yogam imam praptam yogam rajarshah राजर्षय एवं परंपरा प्राप्त योग विदु दे न्यू एंड देन सहयोग इह महता सो इह मीन्स हियर इट इज लॉस्ट एल्सवेर इट मे बी देर एल्सवेर इन द सेंस इन सम लोका इट मे बी देर इह महता कालेन सह योग और राधर इह महता कालन योग इज ऑलरेडी देर सह योग नष्ट 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 और नष्ट अभवत यू कैन से अभवत इट इट बिकॉज ता पास्ट टेन्स यू कैन से इट इट वॉज लॉस्ट और जस्ट नष्ट इज फाइन स योग नष्ट हे परंतप स्कॉर्चर ऑफ एनिमीज परंतपयती वन हू स्कॉर्चिस अदर्स बर्न्स और यू नो ही ही बर्न्स अदर्स अप बाय फियर और इन यू नो दे जनरेट्स हीट ही जनरेट्स फियर एंड हीट दे परंतापयती परंतप so you will see translate as scorcher of enemies you know so that that's the meaning here parantap durbalan ajiti indriyan prapya nashtam yogam imam upalabhya lokam cha aparushartha sambandhinam then further he says he explains this bhagwan bhaskar is explaining this mahata kalena what happened across time what really must have happened so he says durbalan ajiti indriyan prapya this yoga what happened this yoga see it is a connection to the next shloka which starts by sah sah yoga so sah yoga is karta the karma to that is sah yoga here you see sah yoga prapya that yoga having at any personifying the knowledge itself the yoga the moksha knowledge about that moksha which is personified now he says prapya having at any having it in means that in the sampradaya when that knowledge arrived and reached some people what kind of people were these durbala and ajitendriya this this is already said how did the last chapter close the last chapter closed by saying that indriya ani adav eva niyamya one has to control the indriya if the teaching is given to us but we don't control the indriyas this knowledge will not stay 
therefore bhagavan bhashyakar very nicely adds up the conclusion of the last chapter and here mahata kalena sahyoga nashta how nashta because the people were durbal and ajitendriya ajitendriya means those these are people durbala people durbala means those who had no bala no strength these were kshatriyas these were brahmanas but kshatriyas who had bala and have bala in the battlefield they they did not have control over the sense organs because there was so much to enjoy you know, they say the uh, in the battle uh, i think there is a phrase i i am a paraphrase i don't recall the phrase uh, the uh, the spoils go to the winner or something you know so there are so much of the spoils in the battle that you win over uh, rajyas after rajyas greed is fed lobha is fed fed and then dharma is dropped thereby what happens is yoga nashta so durbalan ajitendriyan where they really durbala no they were winning wars they were winning wars after wars but what happened ajitendriya so they were durbala because they could win over the external enemies but the uh, highway robbers they could not win ragadvesha they could not win they could not win over their kamas therefore ajitendriya means they could not win over their indriyas na jitendriya jitendre uh, jitani indriyani yena by a, a person by whom indriyas are won over his jitendriya they are jitendriyas and those who are not jitendriyas are ajitendriyas so tan ajit ajitendriyan prapya who yoga yoga having reached these kind of people who do not have control over sense organs and thereby they are durbala although they had lot of strength in the battlefield when they were with themselves they did not have any control over their sense organs they gave unto them thereby ajitendriyan durbalan prapya this yogam nashtam nashtam yogam upalabhya then you nashtam bhagwan krishna when he saw that this yoga has come to uh, has has reached reach an end it has lost in sampradaya when it was lost in sampradaya imam uh, this uh, nashtam yogam yogam nashtam upalabhya and lokancha lokancha upalabhya this lokancha cha with chakarat it will go as karma to upalabhya lokancha upalabhya what kind of loka having seen this kind of a having seen that yoga is nashta having seen that this loka is also what apurushartha sambandhinam it is having seen upalabhya apurushartha sambandhinam lokam upalabhya apurushartha sambandhinam cha lokam upalabhya and having seen this loka is also what apurash apurushartha sambandha there is purushartha but what kind of purushartha artha and kama dharma is gone and therefore moksha is gone therefore apurushartha sambandha is parama purushartha sambandha is gone parama purusha samba parama purushartha cannot be attained by those who are ajitendriya therefore yoga which is nashta cannot remain as a guide to moksha thereby loka is what this loka is also disconnected from moksha apurushartha sambandhi sambandhinam lokam upalabhya what did bhagwan do sahi ayam maya uh, you will see in the next part huh? I'll, since i have read it i'll read, read it sevayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratanah bhakto sime sakacheti rahasyam he taduktamam so why am i telling this to you he says it is lost in sampradaya otherwise you would have already known it since it is lost in the kshatriya sampradaya where wherein every kshatriya knew it earlier it is lost in time now and uh, that is the reason i have to bring back this which was long back taught by me to surya and it was there in the parampara it is lost therefore saha eva yoga ayam ayam means what that yoga which was taught to aditya vivaswata uh, that is being taught to you so that is being taught to 
you. Therefore, I am Maya Sedya, being taught as in, in the second and third chapter which was already taught. I am which was already taught, which this is, this yoga which is taught to you, it is the same yoga, there is no change which was taught to Aditya also. Adya, I am, te proktaha, puratanaha, that saha puratanaha yoga, maya, adya, proktaha, it has been taught to you. Why? He gives additional reasons. Bhakta asi, you are bhakta, me bhakta asi, you are my devotee. Sakha Chaiti and you are also a friend. Rasyam hi etad uttamam. Why should I be a bhakta or a sakha? So any knowledge has to be given to either to a putra. So here sakha in the sense that very close friend, family member like a son. That love is like a, the, uh, of course like a friend. Here it is a friend but it is said that it has to be taught to somebody who is very close respectful, close or to putra. Actually it is said to a putra or shishya who is like a putra. So bhakta asi, one who is a devotee or sakha, therefore rahasya should not be taught to anyone else. He etad uttamam rahasya. And this is uttamam means it is the best, best kept secret. What is this best kept secret? It is openly taught in the shastras. These days it is openly taught in public also. But still, one who has to get it, alone will get it. One who is an adhikari, he alone will get it. Others will not get it. Otherwise, it was taught in the Sampradaya of Kshatriyas also. Durvalan, Ajit Indriyan, Prapya, Nashtam, Yogam. Yoga, Nashta, it, it became Nashta. Why? Because they were not adhikaris. They lost their adhikaritam when they indulged and indulged and indulged. Thereby, it remained a rahasya. Etam uttamam rahasya. It was not only rahasya, it is uttam rahasya because Although taught, it is not understood. So, it is an open secret. Uh, it is that kind of a secret which everyone knows. But open secret is that which everyone knows. And they really understand. But this is a secret which although being an open secret, still remains a hidden secret. Therefore, Uttamam Rahasyam. We will see more of this in the next part. Huh? Shanti, Shanti. That's it. Any questions? Okay, no questions. So I'll see you in the next part, huh? Okay. Yes, Bhavya. Hello. Uh, so uh, where can I read more about this uh, Shobhana Adhyati? Where can you read? I mean, I haven't come across it in the text. Yes. You have not come across the word, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't no, know. I just... I don't know where you can read about it. You can search online. That's all I can tell hmm? you. But everywhere, the way it is explained is, uh, it is Adhyasa. If you understand Adhyasa, Shobhana is just qualifying that Adhyasa. It is superimposition. What kind of a superimposition where you value it? So it is taught in mm -hmm. the Sampradaya, which book I don't know where, it may be there in books, uh, you will have to search, I don't know. If you are looking for books, I do not know, because all books talk about it, they may or may not use this word, I do not know. But it's a valid mm -hmm. word in Sampradaya, if you have uh, learned from a teacher, you will have heard this word. Okay. You are from the Sampradaya okay. teacher, I mean it is used in Sampradaya. Uh, whether mm -hmm. university uses it, I do not know. Uh, therefore, I do not know whether uh, books use it, but Shobhana Adhyasa mm. is a, uh, if you discuss it to anyone and uh, talk about Shobhana Adhyasa, they will understand. Okay. Or just search online, uh, if there are some books which use this word, I do not know. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Maybe there in Tika, Tika level it may be there, uh, or there may be there in some Prakrana Granthas. But uh, mm. generally that's how uh, the explanation is there in the teaching. Mm. Because one one word drives home a lot of explanation. You, you can do away with a lot of explanation if you just use the word Shobhana Atyasa. Mm. I think this is the word I was trying to recall a couple of, uh, uh, not a couple, a few classes back. 
Yeah, there is another thing I wanted to mention you, uh, unless you have a question. No, that's, that's it, right? Yeah. So, another thing I, uh, uh, was uh, something, yeah, I think uh, last time I was trying to quote a mantra, I couldn't recall. Uh, now I may have forgotten, but it came back to me as I said that if you stop thinking the mantra comes back. So, Taitiri mantra I was trying to quote that time and uh, I think uh, uh, when I said that the uh, the Papa and Punya won't, uh, they don't uh, uh, trouble the person on the deathbed. So I recall that mantra, but I forgot, I don't know whether I, we had a class after that. I forgot to mention that last time. So, anyway. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay. I'll see you in the next part. Namaste.